Okay, let's finish off the tour series before everything changes again. <laughs> Hi, and thank you so much for joining me, for being interested in seeing what's going on in my dining room. And I have my little steppy steppy thing there because we're gonna go from top shelf to bottom shelf and all around. Now I know not everybody is a fan of Blurple, so let's take care of that and see if the flashlight will do enough work and that we can see that work it's properly because I do have backlight despite it being a cloudy day. Oh, look at that. It works. Hey. Okay, so what I've done so far, the only reason some are up here are because of the fact that they are like hot growers, warm to hot growers, like my Dawiana here on the left, and I wanted to protect that new growth there. Didn't want any damage to happen to it. And also because these cloudy days, those that are pushing new growths, I would like to make sure that I keep them going and not have them stop simply because we've got some cooler temperatures, by no means cold, but cooler and no light. So these orchids that are doing what they're doing now, my Lelia purpurata here on the right, I want to be able to make sure that they get the best amount of light exposure in order to continue to encourage those growth to grow. And this purpurata growth is responding incredibly well. And I don't know the brand. I'll put up the name of the brand that I use. They are super cheap. I didn't invest a lot of money because I'm not in the position to do so in the past. I have also almost nine months of perfect light. And for the odd days where it is kind of gloomy, they serve me fine. But I got myself six of those and we'll have a look at all the structure below. But responding fabulously. And here's the mailman that we took care of and attacked. I brought it in because I'm trying to keep those roots growing. And even though there are no new growths coming, it's done its thing. I don't want the cold or the orchid to think that it's time to stop growing, especially when it's pushing roots and we're still doing well. And I spray that microfiber every day with some seaweed water now. Then here is my Digbiana. And check this out, also a warm to hot grower. So inside, right under the light in order to train the growth to go upright. But look at this, look at where the pseudobulbs are gonna be. We're gonna match the old growth. That's the old growth that bloomed for me last year. We're gonna match that, which is great. And the second lead that I didn't have a bloom on is this one, that's the growth from last year. And look at where this one's going now. So we are matching with both leads now, the size of a blooming size pseudobulb. So I am really anticipating two blooms this year. Fantastico. And then I have, for the time being, random fells up here because I want to encourage the vegetative growth of the leaf. That would be the Maximilian, no ID white fell. And the second leaf you can see growing there, there, it's pushing out really well. And that's why I have some random fells on the top shelves. And then based on space in the middle ones as well. So that's kind of the backside, for lack of a better word, regarding what is going on at this point in time inside the dining room, where the only service anybody gets around here is, are my orchids. And then we'll go to the lower shelf. That looks a bit dark on the screen, but I think it's gonna be okay. So everybody is kind of facing the light and according to their leaning on this shelf, I have the light strip in the middle because I've got them all staggered. So if whatever filters through, will filter through. So these guys, here's my little Doria Tonopsis Elmhurst and my Lundii, my little Lelia Lundii. 
which is doing great. It is actually now established in the semi-hydro setup. I don't know for how long because as you can see it is a climber. But I've got new growths coming out from all leads. One here, one there, one down in the middle there, one along here, uh -huh. and in this one I've got one and there's another one that actually has two leads pushing out. There's another one there. So Lundii is loving this setup. However, how long can I keep it going? I do not know. It might have to go onto a Ninja Michael Mount hybrid or something. But for the time being, looking great. I love it. Very pleased. I bought this with the Rapiculus, first ever Rapiculus order that I got. But it is a Rambler and it is a Climber, so not a long-term solution for this one at all. All right, let me scoot around. Tight squeeze. This is the Leonis that is responding to the blurple lights like there's no tomorrow. At some point it kind of, I won't say stalled, but it just stopped. And this leaf was nowhere in sight the last three weeks. And it has shot out a massive, gorgeous leaf. So I might need to learn my lesson about its location during the summer months and put it outside with the other Engracums in the same kind of bright light shady spot because I thought it was getting enough light where I had it here indoors on the shelf right by the open terrace door, but clearly, clearly, unless it's about a seasonal thing, that leaf has just gone nuts under these blurple lights. And then I also have random summer bloomers in here because I don't think that they are strong enough to have tolerated the deluge and inundation of pots like their other compadres that are still outside. So I brought them in a little bit protected. I just turned this one around because the sun was shining for a little bit there, but now we can turn it back around to face the blurple lights when I put them back on. My little ICU unit is here as well. We'll have a closer look at those in another video because taking off the tops, the water droplets will drop to the crown and it's all a little bit cumbersome just by doing a tour. We'll look at them after in a different video. My little Fastuosa here, it's also doing quite well. I'm still expecting some kind of, you know, adaptation process, but it certainly hasn't deteriorated after I finally moved it into the orchid top there with ceramics. It's looking, it's looking quite okay. And here's my rattlesnake plant. I never remember this name, Osioclades spathylofer. I have to make a better effort. The reason I have this microfiber draped over the top is because of how it grew the roots out over the top. And now they have kind of dug their way into the pot. So basically I can remove the microfiber now because the roots have gone in and I protected their growing tips. But look at the size, well, hang on a second. Look at the size of that bulb from this year. Isn't that just huge? It is not double, it's triple the size of before. And yet the leaves remain the same size as before on a smaller bulb. So that's good to know. Never bloomed for me. Don't care if it does or not. Those leaves are worth having. All right, now I'm probably gonna get into the shadow, but here's the Bulbophila Elizabeth and Buckleberry, the one that I thought was Medusa, bought as Medusa. And then I have another one in the back there. It's the Contorta Sepalum. So I have like a community pot of two Bulbos because I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do with these guys. Now I know what I want to do with these guys, but I'm going to have to wait for new growths before doing so. And my little Maximilian Keiki, Fowler there, is doing okay. Having a little, whatever, root growth time. No leaves on this Keiki now, and I'm expecting probably until spring next year, there won't be any new leaves coming. Once you take a Fowler Keiki off the mother plant, that's 
what happens? It just stops and starts to focus on roots, which is a good thing. Sorry about the cluttering in the background. I'm just going to sit down so I don't jiggle around too much. Which is a good thing. Roots are fine. You leave a cakey on a mother plant and it'll actually spike for you and just keep growing, but not when you take it off. So seedling mode has kicked in. This is the um, Bobolicious bell right here, doing well. Keeping an eye on this yellow blotch here, which was not there a couple of days ago. All my fowls are due another wipe down, but that happens every three to five days. I wipe them down again. And uh, that leaf is still showing variegation, which makes me extremely happy because I have a feeling one day it'll just be solid green. And uh, back here I have Leonis, also right under that strip right there, the LED strip. I like it to grow upright and kind of get the spike to go upright so that when the bloom opens, it's not touching everything. and I don't have to worry about the size of the bloom with the edge of the pot. That is the plan anyway. More fowls around here, and all of them have a little spider in their pot, which is, in my opinion, the coolest ever. They make little webs, dig their way into the web and live there. Then we come up again to the middle shelf, but now the front side. And here's a harlequin pushing out a leaf. And I'm kind of facing it away from the light so that it, the leaf kind of opens towards the light, but I think it's not gonna have any of that. Look at that. It seems like they really kickstart the speed of growing their second leaves once they realize temperatures drop and they need to get a move on. The first leaf takes forever in comparison. Sorry about the cluttering there. And this is my sorry little uh, Vanda Pumilla. So I still have an active root there, but it doesn't appear to be too happy. I've cut a lot of the edges off. I've lost three leaves already. So I'm just having, hoping that it's having a transition strop. There's nothing in the crown to tell me it's gonna grow anything else. So just a transition strop, I hope. And then we'll see how that goes. But next door is Shilleriana doing wonderful. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful spike starting. A few of my fowls have spiked, but that'll be a different video as well. Here's little mini Vega Cecilia. No blooms for it this year. And then I back up and here's Mr. Sidiae. Finished its blooming and it's growing the next leaf already. I might have to consider repotting this one or re-situating it into the pot because as much as I love aerial roots, for the time being, I actually want those roots in the pot. So yeah, time of year. Here we are again. Same little cakey here with the Colomy experiment. It's a seedling, no new leaves or anything, but it's not dead. The discoloration you see here, I believe is a touch of sunburn. I wasn't paying attention. That's all I can see. There's no other problems with this little one at this point in time. And here is my sickest orchid, my really, really, really weak gracilis that I have that one new growth there that I'm counting on. You can see how tiny this orchid is against my nail. That's all I've got to hopefully get it to survive. Oh, fingers crossed. I'm not even touching that back leaf there that's come off, that, that one right there. I'm not touching it. I, this thing needs to just, I need that one growth to make it. I'm saying that if that growth doesn't make it, then the orchid is a goner because the scale damage that it's got is astounding. And yeah, there's a glimmer, a glimmer, but that's all it is of hope. And then here are some more summer bloomers. Let me show you, oh yes. <laughs> Excuse me while I maneuver. Let me show you. Finally, Sologeny Lime Bay has stopped blooming and it's been a full year 
cycle. No more blooms until the next new growth comes, but that's okay. I am quite happy to have seen this orchid for 12 months non-stop, and at one point we achieved two spikes. So I'm just gonna go around again, and from the top shelf, show you my little Dawiana Aurea. This was the new acquisition, and I am losing that new growth unfortunately but i am getting new roots so yin yang good on one hand not so good on the other what a shame i even brought it in to protect the new growth but nope didn't like i have you know little eyes down here that i hope will then eventually take over but for now okay we're focusing on root growth which is fine and that lives on the top shelf so now we're on the lowest shelf. I have, sorry for the shaking, sorry about that. I have all my paths down here. This one is doing pretty good. This is my Gloria Nogo, Nogo. And my Iona I wanted to show you because look, I've got a bud forming here and another one coming around back here. It's the first time she's going to bloom with two blooms, which is wonderful. What a little vigorous orchid she is. The little fan in the back that bloomed last year is starting to die back. But two blooms? Julio, I'll take it. My Spicer Rhiannum is doing well. It's giving me another little fan back there. I have to be ever so careful when it comes to flushing. My Bellatulum? Not so much. Too much sun. The angle of the sun got down here and I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I'm not sure this one's going to stand a chance. Which is a big, big shame. Oh well, I still have another little piece of Bellatulum right here. <laughs> but it's done kind of well. It's got a little leaf that actually grew and extended. I raised the sphagnum moss up around again a little bit and it, there seems to be a root, so I don't know how that's going to go, how that's going to develop. Anyway, win some, lose some, and Bellatinum looks like it's going to be out the door. Just a little bit too much sun, unfortunately. But in the back here, I've got the mint chocolate doing fabulously. If it is a mint chocolate, I'm starting to doubt it because the vigor of this orchid it's slower than the um, Lindley Kupowitz, which I'll show you right now, but it seems to have similar attributes. So this could be a Ku Lindley Kupowitz, and it's just uh, a younger one. I love it. The leaves are fabulous. Here's Delinati, or Delinatii. Very, very slow growing, but that center leaf has at least done some moving in the last six months. My Podangus is also doing fabulous, losing one leaf, but the center leaf has pushed out since it's been under these lights. So the light strip here is right above the Podangus and right above the Gojo Fukurin, which is now also growing another leaf. So as much as I think that all, I mean, I would love to have like a spider farmer grow light and all that, but these cheapo blurple lights, goodness me, they're showing me some results and I suppose that's all I need to see. And here is a little seedling that we transplanted, up potted. It's a little Cattleya. I'm not going to take the tag out, but it's like the Melina, uh, a cross with blue sky, blue dreams or something. Tiny little seedling, but there's a new growth now coming out since it's been inside. And we can also say, hey, timing, and you know, maybe it was its time, it could be coincidence. But since it's been inside the last six to, yeah, almost six weeks, under these purple lights for an extended period of time in the evening, new growth, what can I say? Then here's the other one from the same company, Catlia Blue on eBay. And here it is 
its new growth and another new growth coming on the second piece as well. So I'm not complaining about anything that works and doesn't cost a fortune. Dimophorcus lowii has been inside for quite some time. Normally it was right by the glass window, but now that I have the lights on, I have put it back to enjoy right underneath that light strip there. So I've moved it back there and well, you know, at least it's established in its self-watering system. That middle leaf is now, as far as I can see, much stronger and predominant. I got this with seven leaves and it dropped four. Yeah, four. And then started to get burnt tips at the edges and oh, all sorts of things. So my Demophorcus lowii, but has now, as far as I'm concerned, found its mojo. It is totally pot bound. Did I mention I've had it for three years? If not, I've had it for three years. If I have, forgive me for repeating myself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to regather my body here. I'm all folded up and we'll go and look at the rest of the space. Down in the far corner of no man's land, of my dining room shelf grow space area, slash all of that and the above, I have the Signodi's Wine Delight that I got from the Orchid Room. And it is resting, so there's no need for light and all that fandangle. And they can take up and live in this corner until such a time that they show me what they have in store next. And this is the little Catacetum albovirens. Also, not doing much of anything, not growing. So it is going la la land. That's where it will, that's where they rest down in the bottom here. And eventually my other ones from outside will come. And they can also stay down in this lower shelf, tucked away in the corner, not taking up space, prime real estate that is much needed by others. And then to get a perspective, you can see where they live, it's pretty much dark and cool until such a time they wake up again. Now this is going to be interesting with backlight and a flash on. Oh, it's working. Oh, goody. So here's my Multiforme, crossed with Capricornu. This pot was flooded accidentally during the rain. The angle of the rain came in and I didn't realize and this new growth was down here, completely flooded out. The water level was all the way up to here, and I thought it could be possible that I've lost this new growth, but look, I have not. And I have not lost the roots inside either, so yippee, and what a stonker it is. This is going to be one to watch. I already have quite a long cane all the way, excuse me, up there. And I wonder if this new growth, I've not seen it that thick ever before from any new growths. And my back to rescue wildcat here is trying to spike. Successfully spiking, but I'm giving it a few more weeks to trick it to think it's going to bloom and it's coming off because Dum Dum here sent it back into rescue mode and it's not going to bloom until next growth or until totally secure in the pot. And what was supposedly a Goliath, <laughs> red wine delight, is probably a Lycasti. That growth has matured almost. The pseudobulb is not quite the size of previous ones, but we're working on it. At least it's alive. It's the first time it's done anything in about a year and a half, two years. And the roots have gone through the pot and down and are now in the reservoir. So it's not a lack of roots that's going to be the problem. <laughs> Here are my little seedlings, except for the Sophronites there. The coccinia is back there with the growth. Some of the growths that are growing upright. Let me, hang on a second. 
Some of the growths that are growing upright, I have no problem positioning them the way they are. These are the two new growths in the back here that I'm keeping my eye on because I don't want them to go down in the media. I want them to come up. So that's why I, they are not facing the light, keeping them away. And this is a Leopoldii cross, me and Leopoldii's. Huh. Sorry about the dust. That's the next thing on my list of things to clean, all my little seedlings. But for the time being, we've had so much light, I wasn't worried about some dust. But now, I just wanted to get this video in because I can clean even with the lights on, but not do a video with lights on too well. Lelia Crispa, one whole summer of this. Oh my goodness, another eerie color symptom here. Very slow, still not stable in the pot. The moss has grown nicely. There's that. But yeah, I am hoping that when this growth matures a little bit more, that I will get some new roots because those back bulbs are desiccating and they need some more help. Slow grower, I was totally unaware of that fact, but it is. And here is the little Maxima cerula from the orchid room. Fabulous. New roots growing in just as well because the other ones are failing. But yeah, this is looking good. Another year of this one in the pot and then we can graduate it to a bigger pot. And the piece de resistance for the time being in this space is my gorgeous, gorgeous, Digviana Cross. Now somebody gave me the name in the comments and I will put the name up on the screen. I do not remember it yet. I haven't kind of tried to remember it, but I really appreciate giving that cross. Someone in the comments, but this is just, oh, beauty, perfection. And she smells all day long, not just at night, all day. Fabulous, and her fragrance is the Big Biana fragrance, but a little bit more uh, powdery, as opposed to so citrusy like a Big Biana. This has got more of a powder smell to it. Delish, we love. And down here I have some renegades. Renegades because of me, and renegades because of others. This is Nani Puakea Dogashima, renegade because of me. The setback, but you know, starting to grow roots now and that is all I can ask for. I brought it in so that, that there isn't that much of a temperature swing for her. She has it nice and cozy in here. So with the root growth, we can start to anticipate better, bigger and better things. I would like to divide her, but I'm not going to until such a time that she is healthy and strong and can sustain two pieces. And here are my two Francis Fox, And again, this is a long video, one of which is still languishing and it's going to bloom. And I'm so tempted to take that off because she is not stable in the pot, but I have to wait and see what happens. She has not been stable in the pot from the moment I bought her. The second piece back here, let's see, second, not piece, but the second Francis Fox, this one right here, is gorgeous. It is now growing another new growth, and I'm really sorry about the angle. Maybe I should have thought this through better. This new growth here is looking brilliant, and with that, eventually, I have an orchid that will look the part, because all the new growths from this one don't look like they are struggling. So this Frances Fox is coming into her own and eventually I can cut the nasty looking back off. And this Frances Fox right here, yeah. Although the other one has never bloomed and this little sorry thing is blooming, like trying to convince me. You can keep me, I'll get there, you can keep me, so okay. And then in the back here I have the Cattleya Rex that is also a little bit of a sorry candidate. 
extremely, extremely attacked by scale this year, but I've got that under control. I have not seen scale on her for months now. But growing new roots, and that to me is always the biggest sign of hope, like I would like to see with my Lelia gracilis. And down here, simply because, just repotted, Moscom has moved indoors by the light when the sun does shine, and just keeping her stable for the continued root growth. And I think maybe that the problem with this one for not blooming was because there's not enough roots to sustain blooms. So we're gonna be working on that. And look at this, I always love this. Aren't these freckles spectacular? And that sheath? I think it's just extraordinary. And then down here, my Dendrobium tangerinum. Still got those little roots there on the hob material that I keep moist. And those little growths are starting to leaf out. <laughs> if this, if any of these two make it, I am just going to be, yeah, very, very surprised, pleasantly surprised because this orchid was on her way out and then there's suddenly little peaks of green. Incredible. And here's my Kibana, also inside, still getting babied, and it moves under the shelf to the blurple lights after it has had enough airflow to dry that root off because I have to still aerial spray that. So it's all a little bit of a process with this one. You take it away from the shelf to spray it, leave it until it dries out a bit, and then put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Here I have two very, very sickly tolumnias that were doing quite okay during the summer and then suddenly decided to crash. So they've been inside for several weeks now. And then just to wrap this up very quickly, my fires propagation project, one of five, I have one left. And it's still holding on. I've got one blackened leaf there, but yeah, it's still holding on. We'll see how far that goes. And then here is my Lindley Cooperwitz that I mentioned earlier. It has that beautiful foliage. It has some gorgeous fans coming up. It's very vigorous. And that's why I'm saying, I'm wondering if my mint chocolate isn't the same as this. I don't know. And then I have my first Paphia Pedalum ever <laughs> that I bought off the rescue table. And two years later, look at this. I've got one, two, three wannabe spikes and buds. So after two years, at least I see signs that it wants to amount to something and show me what it is. Now I'm assuming that this is just a regular American hybrid, some kind of bloom because none of these others would be in our garden centers and especially not on a rescue table. But who cares? We got it through. And I have to start protecting roots. Check this out. Look at this, root tip, okay. Lesson learned, microfiber a go-go. It'll come right across here for a considerable amount of time, keeping that root wet so that it doesn't dry out and gets right into the media. Because the new growths are already pushing, got one and two. So we're gonna make sure that they can stick around and those roots can go down. This is awesome. Right, I, I got it, I did it. I have got the tool, it's a long one. Although there's not that many orchids inside, but you know, there's a little story to tell on each one. <laughs> Sorry, I do get carried away when I start telling orchid stories. But thank you. I just wanted to sign off and say thank you so much for everything, for your support, for your emails. You know who you are, I really appreciate it. There are actually no words that are sufficient to say 
how grateful I am for your kindness and your comfort and your support. So, from my Brasovola Digbiana Cross and my dining room, thank you everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.